What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 most unforgivable things WWE ever did. We know WWE and their management can be doing some... They've done some wild things in the past, some kind of questionable things, questionable booking decisions, questionable promos, press promos, questionable segments. You know, they, they've had their controversy for sure in the past. So we're going to check this out, see what WrestleMania had, uh, can come up with. Appreciate all the love support. Road to Syndicate. Let's get right into this video decorated history of WWE, there have been some executive decisions which have caused great controversy. Although there is usually a mixed reception to most WWE booking decisions, mm. fans are in agreement that certain segments went too far. They go beyond entertainment and push the boundaries on what's acceptable. Yep. There have also been instances where the WWE has made some decisions behind the scenes which have had lasting damage on their reputation, with some fans choosing to never forgive WWE Chairman Vince McMahon for his often tasteless business decisions. Mm. But which times were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the most unforgivable things WWE ever did. Be sure to subscribe and Should hit that notification one. bell subscribe for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10 firing Nia Jax whilst on a mental health break. Mm. It came as a huge surprise when it was announced in early November 2021 that Nia Jax had been released from the WWE. Nia was regularly featured on television and she was a former Raw Women's Champion. Fans assumed that Nia was invincible, mainly thanks to her relation to Roman Reigns and The Rock, but this clearly wasn't the case. Mm -mm. It surfaced shortly after Nia's release being made public that at the time of her release, Nia was taking a mental health break from television as she had a lot of personal problems that she needed to conquer. This mm. meant that WWE decided to fire one of their talents whilst they were on this important break. This led to widespread criticism from WWE fans online, with some fans stating that WWE was simply kicking Nia while she was down, and some even suggested that it highlighted how little WWE cared about their talent. Number mm. 9. The Montreal Screw I know a lot of people weren't really too saddened from what I could tell that Nia Jax was released because they weren't a big fan of her, her work. They felt like she you know, wasn't really uh, careful with other wrestlers, felt like she injured too many people, didn't really care for her, just her in-ring work. But at the end of the day, it's still messed up to release someone when they're having a mental breakdown, mental issues, and they're trying to sort things out. So, I mean, but that's WWE, man. Remember, it was for budget cuts. Screw job. The Montreal screw job is well course, documented course, for being course. one of the most controversial moments in WWE history. In even history. though it happened back in 1997, it is often cited for being one of the worst things WWE and Vince McMahon have ever done. Now, for those not aware, Bret Hart was set to leave WWE for WCW. He was the reigning WWE champion heading into the Survivor Series main event showdown with Shawn Michaels. And beforehand, Vince had planned to screw Bret out of the WWE title just in case he took it to WCW. The match was initially supposed to end in a DQ with Bret keeping hold of the WWE title and then apparently wanting to surrender it after the match. Mm -hmm. However, Vince, HBK and Earl Hebner were all involved in a secret finish which saw the match end as HBK put Bret in a sharpshooter. There was a lot of backlash from fans and WWE talent following the incident, and in relation to Brett, he would depart for WCW, and he and WWE would be bitter enemies for the next 13 years. Yep. Number oh, wow. 8, airing the Muhammad Hassan segment. On the July 7th, 2005 episode of SmackDown, Davari went one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker, and following the dead man's victory, one of the most insensitive moments in history occurred. Muhammad Hassan began to pray on the ramp, and this summoned five masked men as they were armed with clubs and piano wire and began to choke The Undertaker out. Following this attack, the masked men lifted Davari above their heads and carried him away. Although the segment was taped a few days prior, it aired the same day as the 7-7 terrorist attack that took place in London. Oh. WWE were featured in all major news outlets, as it was beyond belief that WWE hadn't edited the controversial segment out when airing SmackDown in the US. Oh. But the anger was so severe that WWE had to publicly release a statement on the matter and wouldn't dial down on their decision to air the segment. Kevin Dunn actually came forward and said, We are proud of our product. Eventually, enough was enough, and UPN, which was a network which aired SmackDown, wanted the Hassan character dropped with immediate effect. WWE reluctantly agreed, and Hassan would eventually be written off WWE programming forever. Number Damn. seven. Damn. Sheesh, I didn't even know that. Wow. Hey, when the network says you gotta do this because they're paying you, they gotta do that shit. 
Simple as that. Even firing CM Punk on his wedding of day. Of course, this is up Following the Royal well, Rumble in 2014, it. CM Punk walked out of the WWE. He had simply had enough and was struggling both mentally and physically with mm -hmm. his position in the company. This completely damaged the relationship between Punk and WWE, and there was a lot of bad blood between the two parties. On 13th June 2014, Punk would marry AJ Lee in what should have been the happiest day of their respective lives. But on the day of their wedding, Punk received official documents to state that he was officially fired from WWE. Although this could have been a clear coincidence, it was clearly it deliberate and WWE that wanted was, to hurt Punk as much as possible. Chairman Vince McMahon were publicly declared that it was an unfortunate coincidence and he did apologize to Punk, but fans believe that firing Punk on his wedding day was completely malicious. Yeah, that was Number six, purpose, allowing Hulk Hogan back into the Hall of Fame. When Hulk Hogan's racist mm -hmm. rant was leaked for the world to hear, everyone was angry. Hogan was a beloved figure in the world of professional wrestling and pop culture, and to hear him say such vulgar things was hurtful to say the very least. WWE acted promptly by removing Hogan from any of their planned programming, and this coincided with them removing him from the WWE Hall of Fame. Just a few years after Hogan's removal from the Hall of Fame, WWE slowly reintroduced him yep, back into the did. mix. Following an apology which Hogan delivered backstage to talent, he would begin to appear on WWE programming again and was even allowed back into the Hall of Fame. In 2019, it was announced that Hogan would be inducted into the Hall of Fame for a second time, mm -hmm. this time as part of the NWO. Fans were disappointed with how the WWE were willing to present Hogan on WWE television again as if nothing happened. It was as if the WWE... That's exactly what it was. It was, I didn't forget what he said. <laughs> a lot of people didn't forget what he said, but WWE is just, oh, we'll sleep this under the rug. He apologized, he apologized. And there's nothing wrong with people having second chances. If you made a mistake, you said something out of, you know what I'm saying, and you felt that way in the past, but you have a different mindset now, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm not above forgiving people. You know what I'm saying? It's just... It just depends on how true and genuine that person really is, you know, on changing their ways and viewpoints on certain things. WWE wanted the controversy surrounding Hogan to die down, and then they would happily bring him back into the WWE family once again. Number five, COVID mania. The WWE's handling of the global pandemic was rather controversial. This began at WrestleMania 36 as a lockdown was issued, meaning that fans wouldn't be allowed to attend WrestleMania, which was to take place in Florida. Mm -hmm. Although WWE were advised by key people, including the US government, to cancel the event, they insisted that the show went ahead. They decided to air the show from the Performance Center in front of zero fans. This put all talent and backstage personnel at risk of the COVID-19 virus, yep. and it was seen by many as too big of a risk for WWE to take. Also during this time period, WWE released a ton of superstars. The global pandemic made life difficult for everyone, and for a company which was bragging about record financial numbers, releasing so many performers provoked anger and resentment from fans. Back. Number 4 the blackface segment. Oh, One of the most man. infamous moments in Raw history took place in the summer of 1998. DX would come to the ring to impersonate the Nation of Domination, however the reason why the segment is so infamous is because X-Pac would wear blackface to mm -hmm. try and impersonate Nation member Mark Henry. At WWE News the segment was too far as in 2021 the segment was removed from the WWE Network and it finally looked like they were taking some accountability. Number 3 Exploiting Eddie Guerrero's Death oh, Eddie Guerrero's yeah. untimely death in 2000 2005 hit everyone hard. Eddie Definitely. was a beloved member of the WWE roster and he had cemented himself as one of the most gifted pro wrestlers of all time. WWE's tribute show to Eddie was emotional and they did a great job in paying tribute to a true legend of the squared circle. Unfortunately, in the months to come, WWE would use Eddie's death to have further storylines. Yeah. In 2006, they utilized Eddie's memory in a storyline between Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton, and this saw Orton tell Mysterio that Eddie was, was in hell. Real. This was a storyline that made both the fans and Orton himself extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, even Orton didn't want to do that. He was like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I think it's a little bit too far. Like, he didn't feel comfortable even saying that. I understand, you know? Comfortable. In the summer of 2006, Mark Henry would declare during a promo that he spits on the Guerrero name. And if Eddie was here, he would spit on him too. Using Eddie's name in this manner was exploitative and offensive, and fans of Eddie have never truly forgiven WWE for their actions in the months after his passing. Yeah. Number two, Vince McMahon says the N-word. Oh the Survivor my. Series pay-per-view in 2005 <laughs> oh is mostly God. known for WWE chairman Vince McMahon oh. uttering a racial slur in a backstage segment. In this segment, Vince used the N-word in front of WWE champion John Cena as Booker T and Sharmel watched oh. it in complete disbelief. 
Vince was heavily criticized for saying the word, and it's hard to fathom why he decided to say it, never mind air it live on pay-per-view. When Hulk Hogan was removed from the Hall of Fame in 2015, fans called on WWE to address why Vince was allowed uh -huh. to use the word back in 2005. Mm -hmm. This led to the WWE releasing a statement which stated that because Vince McMahon is a fictional character, it's not the same as Hogan's racist rant. <laughs> the segment was you see that loophole, bro? <laughs> but Vince came up with it. He approved it. <laughs> I remember watching, I just was, I, I didn't even get mad. I just was confused and, and, and really like shocked. I'm like, bro, he really said that? I was just like, I get it. That was his way of being funny, but I was just like, oh, okay, Vince. <laughs> I, 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 I like I said, I didn't get mad when I originally saw the same. I was like, bro, I don't give a fuck, bro. I get what he was trying to go for, but he definitely missed the mark. Eventually edited out of the network replay of Survivor Series, but it's still widely available online for yeah. fans to witness. And number one, Over the Edge 1999. The Over the Edge pay-per-view in 1999 was one of the darkest days in WWE history. Impressive During history. the event, Owen Hart was playing a character known as the Blue Blazer, and he was supposed to ascend to the ring from the rafters in a special entrance, similar to how Sting would enter the ring in WCW. However, Owen's harness line malfunctioned, mm -hmm. resulting in him falling almost 80 feet to his Ooh. death. It was one of the most horrific things to ever happen in WWE, and it happened on a live pay-per-view. The pay-per-view, without a doubt, should have been instantly brought to a close, but it wasn't, as oh. Vince McMahon made the executive call to continue the pay-per-view. Vince did this as he believed that that's what Owen would have wanted, but Owen's wife, as well as Bret Hart, continued to condemn this decision. But there you have it, folks. Yep. Ten of the most un- That was one of those things where people, you know, his family was just like, yo, bro, that, that really sucked. Like, you should have ended the show. A man died. A man died doing something that he didn't even really want to do. That he didn't even feel safe doing. He died. And it's like, well, we got to continue the show. Like, they definitely got some ridicule for that. Especially by the family. Like, that's just one of those things where it's like, nah, bro. That's, mm -mm. Uh, And I, I can understand. If someone I cared about, my loved one, a loved one that I know is wrestling, they end up dying doing something for your company and they just are oh well we gotta continue the show it, it just comes off as insensitive and and not caring you know so i get it people paid all their money man to refund them whatever do what you gotta do but someone died doing something to entertain them because you wanted to do something you thought it would be cool and he wasn't really safe with it you know so but comment down below let me know what was the most shocking unforgivable thing uh, on on this video man for me uh i would have to give it to the uh the eddie guerrero situation i think that's just that's too far he had only passed away like a few months prior and you're already using his death in the storyline and, and saying things like he's in hell and stuff i don't like that man. That, that that's just taking it too far it's a little bit uncomfortable and he was an actual person a human being with family and friends that loved him and to see that segment is like nah bro that's too much but appreciate all love support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next week peace